video blog post, I want to talk to you a little bit about Spotify and some of the other cool uh, music streaming services that have come on the scene in the last few years. Uh, music streaming is kind of quickly becoming one of the most powerful ways to listen to and discover new music. And, um, and uh, so I'd love to just sort of talk to you about my personal experience with it, why I think it's cool, and um, some of the uh, some of the things I've discovered. Um, this week I'm going to focus on a new service that just came to the U.S. called Spotify. We started in the U.K. Um, and it's probably the one that's made the most uh, splash in the press lately. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. Um, um, it's not the only one out there, and there's some other really cool uh, competitors to Spotify. There's several other players out there, and they each kind of have their strengths and weaknesses. So, for the sake of simplicity, this week I'm going to focus on Spotify, show you some of the cool things about it, and show you why I think it's a, it, it's a, something worth considering. You know, it's a great way to listen to lots of um, drum play music as well as uh, other favorite bands. Um, so, let's get started. So, first thing you do is you download the Spotify app. Um, Spotify comes with three different membership tiers. Um, the first is a free membership tier. Um, you have to get invited to do that. Not a big deal. There's lots of people on, online that will offer you invites. Um, in fact, you can um, hit me on Facebook, um, Matthew Odemark, my Facebook page, and I have a few invites that I can uh, pass along as well. Um, but the free app essentially gives you access to the entire streaming library, but it only gives you 10 hours of, of listening a month, and you're going to have to deal with advertisements. If you, if you can't hang with that for only $5 a month, you can um, that eliminates the advertisements. Um, and then for $10 a month, you get um, not only everything that you get in, five, in the $5 uh, streaming, but you also get um, the ability to store files locally and, um, so that you can listen even when you don't have access to the internet, as well as um, mobile apps that will push all of your um, preferences and uh, synced files to any of your mobile apps, like uh, your iPad, your iPhone, your smartphone, etc. Um, so, uh, so let's uh, get started here. So I have the uh, premium um, version, so I'll just kind of show you sort of what that gets you for $10 a month. Um, when you first open it, you get kind of a front page similar to iTunes, it shows you all the latest releases, um, and then it also gives you, uh, you can go over here to our top list, which shows you the um, most popular tracks, most popular albums, there's some customization features in here. If you want to see um, what's popular, not just in the U.S., you can you can do that. Um, and um, um, or uh, or just for me, these are the most popular things I've been listening to. So there's some ways you can kind of customize that. Um, um, in general, there's not a ton of browsing features available out of the box in Spotify, and I'll cover that in a minute. Um, sort of how you uh, go about sort of browsing and finding about new music. First, I'll just show you a little bit of how, how it works. Um, when you first, uh, when you first um, install the uh, software on your computer, um, it'll, one interesting thing it does is it scans all of your um, local files, um, like if you have iTunes or, uh, or uh, any other application like that, and, um, and it'll show what they are. Um, and it brings them right into Spotify. So you can listen to any of them directly in Spotify. In gym um, class in high school, they make us all lift weights. Um, and it, but, uh, but a reason that this is particularly cool is that it automatically hyperlinks all of these, um, all of these local files. So kind of all the things you already like are hyperlinks. So, so I only have, um, you know, so I only have a few jars of clay records, for instance, on my, uh, in my iTunes, but if I wanted to listen to more Jars of Clay, I could just hit the hyperlink and it automatically brings me to the Spotify library for Jars of Clay. Shows me a little bit about who the band is, um, shows me who related artists are, um, kind of the top songs, and then as you can see our entire uh, library is represented here. Another cool feature that it does is up here across the top you'll see um, it gives you a couple of uh, different options for um, further browsing information about the artist. So they give a full biography of who we are along with some sweet pictures from over the years. Um, and, um, so that's interesting to you. Um, you get a more um, complete list of related artists. Um, 
all these artists are exactly like us. Um, and then another cool thing is you can do artist radio. This is similar to Pandora, um, in the sense that it, uh, you know, if you've got a favorite artist, it'll kind of give you a, um, you can kind of just hit play and it'll give you a mix of stuff that's related to them. So for instance, besides us, uh, say, say you really like the band Phoenix. Um, so we're gonna search for Phoenix. Um, here's Phoenix. Pull up their artist page. And, um, you know, I've been listening to the heck out of that Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix record, for instance. Um, uh, you can um, see again who their latest art related artists are, and then you can just pop on Phoenix Radio. And it almost always starts with a Phoenix track, and then mixes in other... You can kind of see exactly where it's mixing from. Um, uh, these other artists, um, kind of the era that it's mixing them from, so it's really kind of interesting, so you can kind of even get a get a sense of, oh, you know what, that looks like a pretty cool radio station, or actually that's mixing in a bunch of stuff that I don't like, or something like that. So um, that's just uh, some of the other uh, artist features. So um, so I can I can listen directly to any of these uh, tracks, just um, streaming this directly off of uh, Spotify. If I decide I like something uh, that I'm sampling, where I only get 30 seconds, um, then I just uh, I just drag it over to the playlist section so that I have it for later, um, and that'll um, and that'll just kind of um, help me remember, you know. So that's just a way of managing things that I want to listen to, um, and then I can easily um, head back here and um, add more things to there that I'd like to listen to, um, maybe. Uh, Central Jars of Clay stuff. So, um, and then, so this playlist, you can kind of mix and match, you can take things out, um, you can shuffle around, and um, that's just an easy way to sort of manage the stuff that you're interested in. Um, so, um, so once I've done that, um, I'll get over to the coolest part about some of the streaming services is that they're really built around the idea of sharing music. That's been the biggest problem in the digital music revolution is, um, you know, one of the coolest parts about listening to music is being able to share it with your friends. Um, but, um, so Spotify is really built to share. So there's a couple of different ways. Like, for instance, I'm listening to the shelter. I want to tell my friends about it. I can, I can hit this share thing and I can, um, and I can immediately sort of post the Facebook or to Twitter or to uh, Microsoft Messenger um, a link to what I'm listening to. Another interesting thing is that um, I can browse for other users of uh, Spotify and I can do that a couple different ways. If I know a user's name I can um, I can uh, search for it up in the search tab and then add them to my people but probably the most efficient way is that I can connect through Facebook. Um, so it'll uh, if I, if I do that, it'll ask me, you know, similar to most of the other connect through Facebook things, it'll kind of ask me, are you sure you want to do this? And then it automatically scans all my Facebook friends. And, um, and if they have Spotify accounts, we'll add them. It's not going to work at the moment because my internet's probably a little bit funky. But essentially, they would show up just like uh, these friends are here um, once it's scanned my Facebook friends. Um, and what's cool about that is I can see what my friends are listening to. So I automatically pull up uh, uh, my friend Elizabeth, and it shows uh, some of her, it'll show her top artists and her top tracks once it's loaded, and then any playlists that she decides to make public. So all of my playlists over here, I can switch on in my, um, in my profile to make them public so that uh, other people can see what I'm listening to. And, um, and then I can uh, quickly subscribe to any of those playlists. So there's actually a way to sort of make playlists publicly um, uh, sort of editable um, by multiple people, and that's uh, that's pretty cool. So, um, so that's just kind of one of the cool ways that uh, Spotify has, is encouraging um, music sharing. So it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a pretty fun, organic way to, um, to see what uh, other people are listening to. Um, and, uh, and to share music in that way. I will say that, uh, that that's really the, the majority of the, um, 
browsing features that Spotify has. RDO and some of the other um, uh, subscription services have really done a better job at um, making uh, making um, the, the playlist sharing and that kind of thing um, more integrated into the app. Um, however, I will say that Spotify definitely has a larger selection of content. So these are some of the trade-offs I, I spoke of earlier. Um, so uh, one other thing I'll sort of say is uh, one thing that's not um, that's not um, that doesn't come out of the box uh, very obvious. That's that's a useful thing to know is um, is is again just like I said. There's just um, just not a lot of browsing options other than the you know the 15 or so top records that come up or the top lists. There's not a lot of ways to just sort of browse through and find um, content other than browsing what your friends are listening to. So if that doesn't really do it for you, and, and most of us, you know, the last thing we want to do is sort of find ourselves always in the same musical cul-de-sac, looking at the same um, records, kind of wondering, there's got to be more stuff out there. And so there are some ways to browse by, um, by genre, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll go over right now. Okay, the way you um, browse by genre is, um, is you start up here in the search feature. And essentially, you just have to kind of learn some uh, commands on how to really um, activate the search feature in Spotify. And there's quite a few blogs online that really sort of give you some ideas on how to do this. But one of the handy things that I've learned is um, yeah, most of us like to browse by genre. So, um, so the way you do that is you simply uh, type in genre at the top, try to spell it correctly, put a uh, colon in, and then whatever genre. Um, so as long as the genre is a single word, like say soul, um, should um, give you results. Here's kind of soul results. If you have a multi-word genre, like say indie rock, you have to put quotes around it. Um, and, and then uh, indie rock should give you um, sort of, you know, give you the artists up here, some of, some of the kind of the top hit artists, as well as some of the top records. Or you can just kind of browse by track. and. Um, It'll just kind of keep loading more results until you find something interesting. So, um, so that's uh, another way um, you can uh, figure that out. So the last thing I want to show you is the um, is uh, how the mobile app works, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and so I'm going to just flip to my other camera for that. So if you're a premium user of Spotify, um, you can also uh, download mobile apps, um, which is really when streaming becomes powerful. Um, so if you have an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod Touch or um, uh, or any kind of smartphone, um, there's a there's more than likely a, a compatible Spotify app. So um, the Spotify app is uh, does exactly kind of what you'd hope it would do. Um, it uh, it's any playlist you set up on your computer, it's going to automatically um, sync to to your phone. So all your streaming sort of stuff is there. And um, it'll stream anything pretty much over um, 3G or, or a Wi-Fi network. So uh, any tune um, uh, with pretty good uh, performance over 3G that I've found. Um, and even better over Wi-Fi. Um, if you find you're going to be in a ser you know in a service area that's not that's not great. Another cool feature of the app is um, just like on the computer, you can uh, turn it into the offline uh, mode right up here. So you can see that. Hard to sort of see really well at the moment. Come on, focus. So that switch up in the top corner, um, you just flip that over, and then um, it'll uh, immediately start uh, downloading the song. Now, what I will say about that is for local, um, is is um. If, just because I switch it there does not mean it necessarily switches on the computer. Um, they, that feature works independently. So, um, so files I decide to store locally over here won't necessarily sync over here. Um, I have to make that decision for each of my different devices. So, um, but that's a handy feature if you're going on like a long plane ride or something like that. And, um, and uh, yeah. So, so then really. Um, you really do have kind of access to to everything wherever you are, um, provided you have um, internet access or at least the foresight to sort of uh, know what you want to listen to before you go out of range. Um, uh, 
that's really it. Also from the mobile app, a lot of the same features are available. Um, the sharing feature, if they're listening to a track I really want, uh, I really love. Um, I can uh, I can share this track. Um, share it to Facebook or Twitter. Just trying to get my camera to focus here. Yeah, I can share to Facebook or Twitter. And, um, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Or I can star it or, um, you know, add it to a different playlist or something like that. So, another really cool feature if you're a Mac guy and you have, um, AirPlay at your house, which is a sort of a network speakers, is that you can, um, you can, uh, use that feature right from the Spotify mobile app. Um, this little uh, thing right there will find your network speakers um, on your home network, which is pretty cool. Um, that feature is not available in the computer version, only in the mobile version, which is kind of an interesting little, I think it just has to do with uh, the mobile I.O. Uh, OS um, that's uh, available here. And just um, I imagine it will show up in a later version of, um, of the computer software. So. That's it today. Um, it's not nearly exhaustive. I'm sure it raises more questions than it answers. But um, but it's pretty fun. 